Hey everyone, uh, this is just Austin here. If you're a random YouTuber who wandered onto this video, uh, this is just a summary of my project to measure the uh, rotational moment about the vertical axis on an airplane due to the propeller. Alright, uh, I guess I'll just start off with a little summary of my device here. Uh, basically it consists of two parts. We've got our base and then our simulated aircraft. Uh, it looks pretty much like an aircraft, so that part's self-explanatory. Uh, in order to simulate pitch, I've got a, a little hinge down here. And for yaw, I've attached a turntable which has fall bearings, so it should basically be frictionless. Uh, for the prop, we've got a little uh, motor up here uh, that was the uh, DBF people let me borrow. And for our simulated prop is just a block of wood for the simplicity of calculating the moment of inertia. Uh, in order to create a reaction moment uh, to the moment created by the prop during a pitch rate, we have a rubber band right here. So this basically uh, has a reaction torque about this axis. On this side, I've made little weights here to put on um, the tail, which balance out the weight of the motor. So it ensures that our center of gravity is and vertical axis is along this pivot. So that's the basic function of our little uh, experiment here. Okay, so now you know a little bit uh, about the different parts of this. Now we'll kind of go through the actual experiment. And I'll see me moving this bar up and down, uh, which is simulating a, a pitch rate. And uh, you'll notice that what happens is the airplane starts wobbling back and forth like this. That again is what we're trying to test. So another interesting point to uh, look for is that we've also unintentionally simulated a short period type motion because of uh, this reaction force given by the rubber band. So you'll see the original uh, torque from the prop caused the yaw like this, and then you'll see it come back again to steady state. And also you'll get a little um, overshoot. So uh, that's just something to look for, and we'll just get right to the test video. So here you go. All right, uh, now that you've seen the experiment, it's time to look into the actual data that we acquired. So the first necessary thing to measure is the um, angular speed of the propeller. And this was done by a tachometer, or in a little electronic device, which measures each time it sees one of these little boards here. All right, uh, once the tachometer test was done, we had to measure the load at the same position that the spring is acting at. Now, uh, during the test, you didn't see it in the video, but I marked out the maximum displacement, and you can see it with that line. So what we're gonna do is uh, connect a calibration device onto this, which will basically pull on this with a certain force until we reach that line and we'll be able to measure it. Uh, kind of looks like the weights on the floor in the next video, but it's actually not. <laughs> so uh, the device is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I'm here with Anthony in the uh, downstairs in the Guggenheim. We're testing the force here with the string gauge calibration system. Uh, so I have the string connected right to where the rubber van was connected at the same spot. And we currently have 0.6 pounds on there. And it measures the line, and it matches the line that I drew on the experiment for uh, the maximum deflection. 
All right, and now the part we've all been looking forward to, uh, the calculations. So to start out with the propeller, uh, we measured a RPM of 4,220, or excuse me, 4,200. So to convert that to revolutions per second, we divide by 60. And then uh, to convert that to radians, we multiply by 2 pi. So that gives us a grand total of 140 pi radians per second. Now, our pitch rate, Q, again, that was by me just pushing the handle up and down. Uh, as best I could tell, I was going about a half a turn per quarter second. So we're just going to estimate that at pi over 0.25, uh, which will give us 12.56 radians per second. So the moment of inertia is estimated as a cylinder and is given by mr squared over 2. Now to get the mass I weighed the propeller or the circular block of wood that was representing the propeller and it came out to be 25.5 uh, grams which is about 0.05 six two one seven pounds so in order to get that into a mass you divide by 32.2 and then the radius of the prop was two inches and to convert that into feet you do two divided by 12 squared now that's divided by two and that comes out to be 0 0.000024 now we, in order to calculate the um, torque in the vertical direction, you have to convert it. So we have our pitch rate Q, and we do that cross our prop. So if we set that up, X, Y, Z, and uh, the direction of our uh, Q is in the Y direction, so omega A, or I should that is Q, zero. And the direction of uh, that our prop is spinning is in the X direction. So, J, zero, zero. All right, now when we do this cross product, uh, we get zero X minus zero Y plus negative A in Z direction. So we have a, a negative pitch rate in the act when I actually did the test. So the negatives will cancel out, and uh, we get that the torque is equal to I Q omega prop. So. Our moment of inertia is 0.000024. Our um, Q is 140 pi. And, uh, excuse me, our omega for the prop is 140 pi. And our Q is 12.56. So when you multiply all these together, uh, you get a value of. Zero point one three four roughly pound feet or foot pounds. So that's our calculated answer. Now, uh, our actual data that we got, as you saw in the previous video, was a force at of um, point six pounds. Now, the distance between the uh, vertical axis and the area where, or the point where this force was acting was, um, let's see, 2.6 pounds. So we do 2.6 divided by 12 to put that in um, inches, or excuse me, into feet, and that equals to 0.13. Pounds. 
so, wow, I'm actually very surprised with how close these numbers are. <laughs> uh, that means that the test went very well, and um, the biggest source of error, or potential area error, is uh, this Q here. And I know with a little more practice, you could get an exact pitch rate, um, but again, this was just an estimation. So overall, uh, the test went very well. Uh, we got accurate results and uh, had a good time.